Hello everybody, today is Sunday, the 1st of January 2012, or 2K12, not sure yet how I'm going to say it this year, but Happy New Year, as we're now moving into the new year. Let's start off within the uh, daily chart within silver, and this is the current trend line that it's facing, obviously in a downward motion. Now the 38.2% Fibonacci level towards the upside was support in here for about uh, two weeks. It wasn't resistance. Right in here it got above that level and it held it for quite some time and it was not able to break above the significant $35 resistance and then it went below, found resistance at this level, and then boom, as it uh, had enough within the 31 or so area of support, it uh, managed to continue to go lower, thus giving silver that of a down year. Within the weekly term time frame, we have a situation in here where we have a Fibonacci low, which is 1774 that was from the breakout level in august of 2010 and a high of 4981 that occurred in april of 2011 and within this we first had fibonacci support at 33 dollars and 58 cents and it held there for well over 20 weeks so it was significant support and then the more often you find an area of support that has been tested for quite some time it's more likely to be taken out which is exactly what happened in here and it was a very fast move to the below the lower fibonacci which is 2632 the first time it hit there it hit 2610 that's a 22 cent difference less than one percent that's a hit, especially in the long-term time frame. The second time it hit, it was 26.14. So two hits within the significant Fibonacci level. More often support is tested, the more likely it is to be taken out. What that means is if or and when we come back down to 26 area, the odds of taking it out do increase. And as long as we're playing within this downtrend, that's the most significant downtrend range that we are currently facing. Now let's move this on to the monthly term time frame. And we had one lower low. When that was placed within the December lows and the September lows. The low that was originally placed back in uh, the summer, well, it, was, it only had to get above this uh, most previous low of 26 to be a higher low, which was the case but it made a lower high and now we've had one lower low with one lower high and with the Fibonacci support being set at 2531 it, it hasn't been touched but close enough 2610 that's a difference of about 80 cents so on a really lo more long term time frame if it's two percent close enough and thus it's now been tested on uh, two different occasions and if this level gives in or fails the next probable result will be a fairly fairly fast move down to the previous level of 1665 or within the area of it because I got another thing that's going to say it's 21 as we get into that uh, very sor shortly. So there's good reason for why the bottom is in due to the fact that this previous Fibonacci testing uh, is at the 61.8 and this one's at 38.2. Thus, currently it's, it's at a level where it is more likely to bounce from. That doesn't necessarily mean that it will, but if hypothetically speaking, the market starts the year off and it just never looks back and goes forward, It'll be very easy for me to state, yep, it came down to the significant support level, and then it went higher on two different time frames. Now, let's take a look at this on a weekly term perspective, or, or more uh, ticks within the chart. And I got a bunch of different lines in here, and the original range is this one in here, the resistance line that covers the 2009-2010 resistance field, as well as the support level. 
I drew a line down below. It's the same rate or distance from top to bottom and the rate of ascent is all the same. And the reason why I put this lower one in is because if we happen to go lower, I'm going to be expecting that the bottom part of this is where we will find support. And obviously if we get above here, well then there's the next line in here as we continue to go on further. And of course there's the look at the previous resistance band that uh, does seem as if very well might come into play. Now let's take a look at a few of these lines here. I got a line for 50 which is actually pretty much 49.81. And within this, this line here is 31.42. It's now been tested twice. Therefore, it's having a whole hard time holding in. Thus, if this level gives in, it's going to be most likely testing the level of $20.94, which is a previous resistance area. And if it doesn't go there, it will be... A failed move and oftentimes from failed moves create fast moves so if it bottoms where it is or 23 24 and anywhere in that area and then it just bursts towards the upside then the breakdown going below 32 will be that of a failure and then the opposite of down is higher which would mean a big moves towards the upside Still unclear what exactly is going to take place. If you want to know more about uh, Silver Fibonacci Upside, please do a YouTube search for Silver Fibonacci Upside. And I've got about four or five different videos regarding this subject. Alrighty, now the December average price was $30.29. This is the inflation adjusted chart and it's approximate data. After all, I can't tell you exactly what the inflation is. I'm not going to say nobody can, but I will say I don't know who can give me correct information. If you're looking at the uh, BLS, I think it's BS. Anyway, with that being said, we can see that uh, we've had a little bit of a downfall in here, or a correctionary phase, uh, thus now about to create a higher low from the most previous breakout ones at around 20. You can, you can say in here, but no. There's a low in here at 20, and there's a low, excuse me, there's a low here at 12, and then again at 20, inflation adjusted. But because the average is 30.29, and we're going to open January at 27 and change, we can just put a little tick down further to open the month of uh, January and the price is 27.82 and the 2008 inflation adjusted high is currently set at 25.61 even though its nominal average was 1951. The high in March of 08 was 21.35 which, which would be around 28 today as the approximate true inflation over three and three quarters years has been around 30%. So therefore, the 28 level, which we've already been to, is an area where we encountered previous resistance. So nominally, we got to go down to 2021. Inflation adjusted, we've already been there. Okay, and again, important note, if you're looking for government inflation adjusted data and calculations, then you are looking at incorrect data. Because some people say... Technical analysis doesn't work or charting doesn't work. It works when you, you use it correctly. And I don't want to say it that way, but when you are able to get good uh, calculations from the information that you see, it works. The only way that technical analysis is incorrect is if the data is incorrect. Therefore, if you are looking for inflation-adjusted data and you're using the BS numbers you are using incorrect data, thus your analyses could be way off. Moving on, though, it's still above all these significant moving averages, and of course still in a shorter-term bullish market, but still well below the 1980 highs. And if we take a look at this over the yearly situation, the average price this year was uh, 35.21. Last year, it was 2019, and it was 2079 in 1979. Thus, by far, this is the best nominal silver average in history. It was 2011, the best year ever. But still, uh, to say at the very best within this inflation-adjusted chart, it's at the middle part of this range. 
And if we take a look at this one going back to a long, long, long time ago, what I did with this one, I took the 650 year chart. And I have been using this and have updated to how we're seeing this today up towards this uh, moving average in here, which it got above it the first time, went below it, and uh, pretty much made a matching low, although literally it was a, a lower low. Getting above here, finding support up around this little previous area at around 30-something. Yeah, that's what we'd want to see, but it's a yearly chart. How this thing's going to play over the next little while, uh, very difficult to state, but what seems somewhat extremely simple, somewhat extremely whatever, is that by the end of this decade, we will not be trading fiat currency because fiat currency will be part of the past. That's my personal prediction, which is why I'm holding physical silver because my bet or my wager is that in the not-so-distant future, but really somewhat soon, that uh, confidence in currency is going to be lost so bad that it literally will be done. And thus, my bet is that physical silver will out-surpass that of the paper-slash-cloth rectangles. Thank you for tuning in, and have yourself a Happy New Year. Bye-bye.